Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I thought I would share some of the books that I have been reading so far this year. Actually this is all of the books that I've read up until now, although I'm probably going to schedule this so I might have hopefully read a couple more by the time it actually gets published. Um, so I'm trying to read 30 books this year and I'm probably a little bit behind schedule to where I want to be but I did go on holiday in May and basically just did nothing so that's why. Um, it's been kind of a mixed bag, there's been quite a lot of three out of fives um, which are kind of those weird middling ones that you kind of forget about. Uh, it's a bit of a weird category and there's been a couple of real gems and then a couple that were quite weak. Um, so not like a, an amazing year for books but still pretty good and I thought I would share them with you. So um, it's fairly eclectic, so the, I started off the year with um, Less, which was published in 2017 by um, uh, Andrew Greer um, and won the Pulitzer Prize for Fiction in 2018 and I really enjoyed reading it. It's uh, about a middle-aged um, gay man who lives in San Francisco and I guess quite a stereotypical um, kind of character in a way, but he come, he's very likeable and um, not too mopey. And um, he is basically trying to escape the fact that his ex-boyfriend is getting married to another man, so he goes kind of around the world um, having adventures. Um, and I liked it, so I gave this one a four out of five stars in my own personal ranking system that basically means nothing to anyone but me. Um, next up was The Sands of Mars by Arthur C. Clarke. I do like a bit of sci-fi. Um, this was um, written or published at least in 1951. Arthur C. Clarke was one of the major sci-fi dudes, the fathers of sci-fi, I guess. He, I think, uh, as well as a few others, tried to add a bit more scientific heft to the genre. Um, and it is um, kind of enjoyable about going to Mars where the human race is colonising and they have those kind of adventures. Um, but he seems sort of um, surprisingly focused on the personal lives of the characters, which surprised me I guess for a male writer in 1951. I don't know if that's what the public were into. He was certainly a very successful and prolific author so presumably people had an interest for that. Um, I personally probably would have liked more of the alien stuff because I didn't find their personal lives that interesting. Anyway I gave that one, that was my three out of five stars. Um, so the next one is one of the murder mysteries. Um, I also kind of got into murder mysteries this year as well. Um, so this is Whose Body by um, Dorothy L. Sayers and it's part of her Lord Peter Whimsy series with, who is an upper class amateur sleuth with not much better to do in his time. He certainly doesn't need to work and he just investigates murders and sort of gets in the way of the local police. Um, yeah, I, it's, uh, it was enjoyable but quite a silly plot when you actually find out how and why it was done. Um, the one thing that stuck out to me as being very much of its time, it was published in uh, 1923, um, is that one of the characters is Jewish and people make a lot of comments about this. And I did think that, okay, maybe that'll be relevant to the plot, but it kind of wasn't. They just seemed to really need to constantly go on about him being Jewish, which just kind of came across as being anti-Semitic after, well, after like the first sentence, really. <laughs> Um, so unfortunately that kind of ruined the book for me a little bit. Um, going back to some science fiction, uh, this is Set Phases to Stun, 50 Years of Star Trek by Marcus Berkman, who apparently has written other books about sheds and other kind of nerdy middle-aged man things. So this um, was published fairly recently, I've got it written down from where. 2016 is when it was published. Um, I like sci-fi, I like Star Trek, I really do like Star Trek. Um, this is all about the original series with a bit of stuff about The Next Generation, which is my favourite series. Um, I'm not a huge Trekkie with an encyclopedic knowledge of the original series. Um, and that's kind of who this book is aimed at, but I don't you know, it's kind of like a, a, a fan, but not a super trekky. I just kind of think that it's a bit too nerdy if you just have a casual liking for Star Trek, and it's not quite nerdy enough if you really, really are a diehard fan. There's a few interesting anecdotes, but I didn't really like the way he structured the book. I think it was kind of flawed. It just went through every episode one after another, rather than looking at the themes of the plots or looking at the behind the scenes stuff and putting that more in a thematic structure. I don't know, I would have structured it differently. 
Um, on to some more hard science. Um, Time Travel, A History by James Gleick, or Gleick, or Gleick. I, I still don't know how to pronounce his name. Um, this was also published in 2016, and I thought it would be about science fiction in popular culture. I thought it would be a lot about how it is portrayed in TV and films. And he certainly starts off by talking about H.G. Wells' is, um, a time, uh, time traveller, time machine, time machine. Um, and that, that book and that idea crop up a lot in this book. However, it is a lot of science. Too much science for me, not enough science fiction, I'm afraid. Um, interesting though, um, worth a read, definitely, but um, it was a little bit too heady for my brain at times. Um, Strange Weather in Tokyo by um, Hirobi Kawakami. I'd read a different book by her and enjoyed it, and boyfriend got this one for me for my for Valentine's Day, and also because in uh, May we went to Japan, so um, it was before a few months before we went to Japan, so it was quite a sweet present. But I really, really, really hated um, one of the main characters, the guy in it, so it's a love story. So um, she gets into a relationship with a man who used to be her teacher at school and the dynamic of their relationship I just felt was creepy he's just creepy um anyway <laughs> apart from that it was great um I do like Japanese books and books about Japan now this one was something really uh, different this is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead and by Olga Toka Chuck, I think, is something like how you pronounce it. It's a Polish author, um, book set in a remote Polish village. It's won the Booker International Prize. Um, so it's a, a murder mystery book, but it's quite unique, quite different. The main character is an older woman um, who is basically considered by society now to be no longer of any use and she kind of um, I guess uses astrology and um, her belief in astrology and the influence of um, the planets etc um, to kind of con uh, kind of bring order I guess to what could be a very chaotic world. She has a love of nature, she has a love of poetry um, and it's I, I really liked it, it's just really different and um, it was funded by the EU which makes me like it more mainly I guess because we're possibly probably maybe leaving the EU makes me quite sad um anyway I really like this book I recommend um so Caroline Duffy um Feminine Gospels and this was published at some point in time 2002 um it's poetry I don't understand poetry I gave this two out of five I just didn't get it. I just don't know what I'm reading. I, I, I take responsibility for some of this, for me not liking the book, because I just don't really get poetry. Um, but I just... It's a lot about women. It's all about women, I guess. But I... Um, more murder mysteries. This is Ngeo Marsh. Um, and these were... It's a set of three different books that were published in 1933 four and 35 originally. So a man lay dead, enter a murder and the nursing home mystery. Murder. I was trying to read it off the back and there's a sticker on the back. Um, the nursing home murder. Um, so it's quite a chunky book but I did actually read all of them. I was so proud of myself. Um, yeah, they were okay. Um, so it's a detective who's an actual detective which is nice I think sometimes rather than just like some amateur who kind of bumbles along and gets in the way of the actual police um, and it has like a little cast of his little friends who help him out on these kind of uh, investigations um, yeah less silly plots than the Dorothy L. Sayers one and less racism unfortunately it was written in the 1930s so there were a few comments in one of the books that did make me go oh okay surprised that you left that into the modern publication but there we go. Um, I think it's just because it's there's only a couple of sentences or a couple of little phrases. It's really hard to say that the that the book or the author are racist. It's just terminology that we probably wouldn't really ever use now. 
but that kind of stuff changes as to what you know what's acceptable and so it it's hard, it, it, it was just hard to make a judgment on the book because of just a very few words and um, but it did make me go oh <laughs> okay uh, hmm. um moving on um julian bars flaubert's parrot i do like julian barnes so this was written in or published in 1984 i really liked um sense of an ending which is another one of his books also from the 1980s i think um this book has a lot about flaubert in it who is the ooh, french author who wrote madame bovary so if you like flaubert or you know something about him or madame bovary you would probably get um, more out of this than I did. That is to say I didn't enjoy it but there is a lot about Flaubert in this um, and much less about the narrator who's a retired doctor who very slowly kind of gives you details about his life and his past and, and things um, throughout the book whilst he goes on kind of a tour of France to learn more about Flaubert who he's a big fan of. It's good I just think all the Barnes books are better. I do like Julian Barnes. And this was like a, a random find. It's Little by Edward Carey. It's quite a recent book. I think it's 2017. No, it's 2018. Um, and I do like a book with illustrations, especially when they're of random body parts and organs. That's appealing. This is why I bought it really. I got it in a charity shop. Um, and the cover appealed to me and then I flicked through and there's, there's illustrations in the book, which is, makes it even better. Um, it's, yeah, it's a... A take on the life of the girl and woman who would become Madame, Madame Tussauds. Tussauds. I don't know. How, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't know how you pronounce the name. I can't make my brain pronounce words clearly. Um, and I mean, she had like a, an amazing and dramatic life. So she was a servant and an assistant to a man who made um, wax body parts and then wax people. Um, she was a servant in the royal household during the French um, Revolution and, you know, experienced all the violence of that period and she then um, opened up the famous waxworks. So there's a lot going on. Um, it sticks to her real life story reasonably well from what I could gather and then it does take some dramatic, poetic twists. Um, but no, I really enjoyed this. This was another one that I think was like a five out of five. It was one of my best ones so far. Um, so this was a, another present from my boyfriend for my birthday in April. So just before we went to Japan and it's the Penguin Book of Japanese Short Stories edited by um, Jay Rubin, but it's a collection of different authors. So it's published fairly recently, but the, um, the actual stories date from between I think, 1898 and 2013. So there's quite a wide range. Um, and it's a really eclectic mix that covers um, traditional ideas of um, patriotism and um, honour and then also the um, relationship with the West and more uh, modern concerns, modern life and then there's quite a few stories about the mid to late, well the, the middle part of the 20th century really, so there was a fair few natural disasters, um, a big earthquakes. Um, and then also the atomic bombs, which obviously had a massive impact on Japan. So obviously a lot of people um, wrote about them. And I just found that period of Jap Japanese history really, really interesting. Um, so there was a lot of them that I liked. There were some slightly odd ones. Um, but um, no, it was really enjoyable actually. So um, yeah, I recommend that if you're interested in Japan. And then the last one that I've read so far this year is um, Elephant... No. Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by um, Gail Honeyman and this um, won various things. What did it cost a first novel award, uh, British Book Awards, Book of the Year, Specsavers National Book Awards in Popular Fiction. Um, and I think it was published in 2017. Um, so this had a lot of hype and everyone loved it and I'm probably the only person that didn't. I just thought it was okay. I just didn't think it was that great and I didn't think it was worth all the hype that it got. Um, it has kind of a darker theme than I realised when I bought it. Um, so a woman who had a quite a dark and chaotic childhood now struggles to connect with anyone around her in adult life and she has a fairly 
um, strict routine that she follows, but she's kind of stuck in a rut. And then a few small uh, events happen to kind of shake up her world, basically, and um, really open up her life, which is a nice idea. I just don't think that the author necessarily made it that believable for me. Um, certain things, the dialogue just didn't ring true, the characters did, didn't really feel like real people, they weren't really fleshed out very well. Um, and everyone says it's really funny and I have to say that whenever a book is described as being like hilarious on the cover, it generally means that it's not. And I just didn't think it was funny at all, which is fine. You don't have to write a book that's like laugh out loud hilarious. But then I was just a bit confused as what was it supposed to be funny? Like I just don't really get what was, which ones were the jokes, you know? I don't know. Uh, anyway. Those were the books of 2019 so far, um, so I still have a few to go if I want to get to 30 this year, but I just keep buying and buying and buying more books, so I certainly have plenty to pick from. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Have you read any of these books? Did you like them? Did you hate them? Let me know what you think. If you've got any tips for any books, particularly shorter books. Um, let me know in the comments and if you like the video please give it a like and if you would like to see more please subscribe.